What is going on everyone and welcome to week two of Champions of Galar. This week we are going up against Badass Process, coach of the Indiana Tracers, someone who I've gotten to know very recently and someone who I know is a very very good player and is definitely going to be a tough matchup this week for us. In addition to that, he uh, is the winner of YCL, uh, I think the most recent winner of YCL, which is how he qualified for CDT, um, as well as someone who is doing really, really well in the current um, World Championship Tour for um, Automatic. I think he might be like one of two or three Wi-Fi players left in the running. So um, yeah, I, like I know Bepsis is out, Mounte is out, Shuckle King's out, but Badass Frostlass is still holding down the fort for us Wi-Fi players. So um, I know he's been doing pretty well there uh, as well. So uh, that's pretty exciting. Uh, he's going to be a tough opponent, and he has a, a, a very scary team. I, I like my matchup here, um, and I feel very confident coming off a win uh, against Jungle King. Not the cleanest win, I'll admit, but a win nonetheless, and one that I am pretty proud of. Um, one where I, I do feel like I played very well. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's uh, let's get on with week two. All right, so let's get the let's get the thank yous out of the way first because. Last time I forgot some people, um, but you know, this time it, I'll actually remember. Uh, first of all, big thank you to Zazo, definitely the most influential person when it came to the actual team construction, um, and someone who always has amazing concepts uh, when I bring in matchups that um, puts me in a situation where I, you know, am, am bringing stuff that I don't think I would have otherwise brought um, if he wasn't helping me out. So. Uh, massive thank you to Zazo, um, as always, and then thank you to Amol, who just recently joined the front office and is going to help me out a bit. Thank you to Hayes, who mocked me. Thank you to Jay Ricky, who mocked me. Thank you to Razor, who mocked me. Thank you to Vepsis, who mocked me. Thank you to Owen, who mocked me. Owen mocked me this week, which is cool. Um, thank you to Loco Ghoul. Thank you to Sir Legendary Superior. I don't know if I said Serp yet, um, but Serp mocked me like five times this, this game, which is great. Um, and then I think thank you to Marcus. Marcus also helped me with a mock uh, as well. So thank you to all those people. If I'm forgetting one or two people, I, I deeply apologize, but I believe that's everyone. Maybe I think Cherry may have given me a mock as well. So thank you to Cherry. If you didn't give me a mock, then there's your free thank you anyway. Um, but yeah, good, 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 uh, people that I've helped me meet and I'm forever appreciative. So thank you. Um, let's get into the matchup. So he has a Celestila. I sort of historically do very poorly against Celestila in games because I tend to struggle to figure out whether to be physically defensive or just defensive or offensive in general. Perk of this matchup is that he kind of struggles to find coverage against my team for offensive Steela, which I, is pretty rare um, as someone who's used Steela in the past. But in this matchup, he kind of struggles uh, mainly to run Meteor Beam because I feel like he needs three coverage moves that um, basically means he can't run Meteor Beam or Autonomize, one of the two. I think he needs a uh, fire move for AG Slash. He needs probably Steel is the most sort of hits everything type stab coverage and then he needs something for stun fisk after that like a giga drain or an earthquake or something along those lines and if he's, if he's physical i could see heavy slam earthquake um but i have a check for that so um i feel okay against physical celestula nonetheless it is kind of the biggest threat to the team that i am bringing especially one celestula set that i'm a, very very scared of um and just faced in a mock a few minutes ago um is megahorn celestila um, because I have Zarud and Mesprit as some of my more bulkier checks to Celesteela this week. I know that sounds weird, but that is the case. Um, and if he brings Megahorn, then I'm in a world of hurt. But Badass Process, if you don't know, uh, made a very infamous Twitter post saying that uh, if coaches bring inaccurate moves, they're bad. So it becomes a win-win for me. If he brings Megahorn and I lose to it, then I could just say that he's bad on Twitter and expose him. If he doesn't bring it, then I don't lose to it. So win-win either way um so other parts about his team that i'm a little nervous about um i think dracozolt plus uh gigalith is coming it's probably the best combination of offensive mods against my team with double water fairy caldeo looks kind of eh and kind of same with volcarona volcarona has a little bit more viability than caldeo in my opinion but i still think that there's six mods that are way better than it 
Um, especially with Aqua Jet, I can pretty easily revenge uh, things like Quiver Dance. So I'm not too worried about Keldeo. I'm not too worried about Volcarona. Uh, Razor brought like an SD Keldeo against me with Poison Jab. I have to like be wary of that, know that it exists, but it's not the end of the world if it comes. Um, it's really Dracozolt and Gigalith that I think have the best matchup against me on paper, which is why I have the little guy in that sixth slot there um, that you're going to see soon. Uh, after that, it's kind of a toss-up about what comes. I think the last big threat that I'm pretty sure is like coming is either going to be some like Agility Diggers B-Set or SD Quick Attack or Scarf. I think one of those threes will come against me. Um, very, very offensive. Um, it, but it was something that a lot of people didn't bring against me in Mox. So uh, I kind of had to start like asking people to bring Scarf Diggers B against me in Mox because I didn't feel like I was getting enough preparation against it. That's probably the biggest threat to this team if, if played right and he makes the right predictions. So... I have a few outs versus it, um, but it's still going to be very, very scary. Um, and then last, in terms of what I think could come, I think of the Mons I haven't mentioned, the order of likelihood um, of Mons that might come is probably Dragalge is the most likely, followed by Celebi, I want to say, um, and maybe Whimscott. They're kind of in the same boat. And then I think Lantern is the next most likely, and then I think Spiritomb is the last likely. So Spiritomb could come. I faced like two Spiritombs in Mox, but... I would not be very scared if Spirit Team came, like, at all. So, uh, I think that would be a little bit of a waste of a slot. But he brought it last week, so maybe he brings it again. So, let's get into what I'm actually bringing this game. I am bringing a lead Calm Mind uh, Weakness Policy Tapu Fini. You might look at this and go, oh, this is your end game, Aqua. That makes a ton of sense. You know, that's cool. Cool end game. No, I'm leading this and I'm clicking Calm Mind. Uh, this is a really, really good lead into him. Um, and I should be taking down most leads. So, he led really passively in week one. He, he led Spiritomb. I obviously don't think if he brings Spiritomb, which is a big if, he'll lead it again. But I do think it's possible that he leads something like a Lantern or a Dragalge if either of them end up coming. Um, and they click sort of like the super effective move. So Lantern might click Volt Switch. Uh, Dragalge might click a Poison move. And if that happens, I can click Call Mine, proc my weakness policy, and probably just kill something right off the bat. Uh, that's kind of the idea with it. If he leads Celebi, if he leads Whimsicott, same deal. I'm just going to, instead of clicking Call Mine, just click Ice Beam, get the weakest policy boost, and KO either of them with a plus two hit. Um, if it's Celesteela that's leading, uh, I have options. If it's Finny that's leading, I could just attack what's in front of me. Like, there's no way for him to, like, immediately threaten Finny, like, at all. Um, nothing from Digger's B kills me, even, like, a Wild Charge. Uh, the only thing that would kill me is, like, Banded Wild Charge, which would just let like, trap and shin to trap so i don't really care um there's literally nothing that he can do to stop finny from at least doing something in this game uh the only way that i feel like finny wouldn't pop off in the early game is if i took it upon myself to switch into something else because i thought it gave me more you know value so something zazu and i were talking about where you know as much as it could be valuable to like get an ice beam off on whimsicott or celebi in the early game it they could also just like be pressured to click a grass move in front of Finny, and I could just go Crobat and click U-turn for a little bit extra utility and preserve Misty Terrain, which is pretty big for his two dragon types. Um, so while it's a dedicated lead and a dedicated lead breaker, it's not a dedicated suicide lead. So there are scenarios in which I'll, I'll switch it out and, and use it more in the mid and late game as well. Um, but, you know, I, I had a mock where I literally 6 0 off lead with this, with this set. So, and the set... Aside from the EV spread, which Zazo helped with, this set is my creation in full. So suck it, Zazo. Uh, this is my Finny. It's going to pop off. I love Zazo so much. But I think um, we were talking about a few different possible lead options, but this is the one that I was most excited by that uh, I thought of. So yeah, cool. Nice little weakness policy Finny to lead off the th with, uh, with the team. Crazy. Uh, next spawn is Zarud. Yes, you heard me right. Zarud is my Celesteela check. Why is Zarud my Celesteela check? I would say about 85% of mocks, maybe 90% of mocks that I had. Probably had like 15 mocks for this game, maybe 20. Um, I saw offensive Celesteela maybe like twice, maybe like three times. Um, so yeah, this is like the check for defensive Celesteela and the initial pivot in the Celesteela. If he ends up being Megahorn, he ends up being Megahorn, and I do have outs for it, for, but, like, this choose a Leech Seed means I don't get Leech Seeded, um, and with all this Bidaf investment, I am not getting to a KO by anything at all. Like, I'm not being to a KO by Air Slash. Air Slash is doing, like, 38 to 40 or something, or to, like, 44. 
um, flamethrower is doing even less. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty easy. Um, I could get worn down quick, but that's why I bulk up synthesis. If he just kind of keeps clicking heavy slam against me, then I can bulk up versus it and just start clicking buttons. Um, the only things that he really has to revenge me very well are the uh, Keldeo, which because I'm so spadef, if he's Aura Sphere, um, it won't do very much to me, and I can KO back with Seed Bomb. If he's Sacred Sword, it or Secret Sword in this case, which da damage is based on defense, hopefully the bulk up boost will help me out a little bit. So it, it can trade one for one with Keldeo if I need it to. Um, and even Dracozolt. This thing, while it wasn't intentionally built to wall Dracozolt, it can wall Dracozolt, like, pretty easily. There's not much Dracozolt can do to 2 KO this thing, um, unless I'm out- unless I'm in sand and can't click Synthesis. Um, Dracozolt really isn't doing too much to this thing, so that's very good. Like, Dragon Claw doesn't 2 KO, uh, Fire Moves don't 2 KO, whether it's Fire Fang or Fire Blast, like, Bolt Beak doesn't 2 KO. It's pretty good. So. Zarud is pretty phenomenal this this game, and I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Um, when Zazu convinced me to draft Zarud, I was kind of skeptical about it at first because I kind of have seen. No offense to like anyone watching, I've watched Zarud on Wi-Fi quite a bit, and I feel like people have been using it like absolute garbage, and I like it just completely like denied my interest in using it. And I feel like I'm using it already after two weeks in a way that is like very unique from how I've seen it before, which is just like scarf offensive or just like, you know, just click, you know, like, Darkest Lariat, Power Web, Close Combat, U-Turn, or, like, just four attacks. Like, I feel like how I've used it in these past two games is a little a bit, as, like, bulkier and a little bit more, but still simultaneously being an offensive threat uh, with speed. I think, I think it's going pretty well uh, so far. So we'll see how it does this game and um, how it goes for the rest of the season. I've been loving it in Mox, is my point. So, yeah. Um, and by the way, as always, uh, the little calc list is down in the description if you want to like follow along with it and take a look at, at um, the calcs this uh, this build had to endure and what all the specific EV spreads are for. Uh, next mod is Bandit Azumarill. It kicked ass last week, obviously. It's going to kick ass this week, obviously. Um, his responses to Azumarill are few. Um, this is one kind of a necessary bring to check um, Volcarona, but two, it's something that if I can get in on the right mons, we'll basically just claim a kill. Um, if I get it in on Keldeo, I can click Play Rough or Liquidation or Knockoff, depending on what's there. His best answer is one of two things. It's either going to be a one-time Water Absorb Lantern switch in, in which case if that exists, I'm probably going to be clicking Knockoff most of the time. Um, or it's a physically defensive Celesteela, in which case, one, I don't have to worry about an offensive set, and two, even like physically defensive Celesteela is three at KO'd by like liquidation, so that's fine, and I can knock off its leftovers as well, so like I have tons of options, Celesteela gets worn down over time and eventually player off becomes super free, so I like this Azumarill set a lot, I think it's going to be very, very good for me, and it's also an out versus offensive Celesteela as well, currently I have it so that like two Zarude Darkest Lariats into an Aqua Jet, I think can KO a Celestealer, or maybe it's a Zarude into a Mesprit into an Aqua Jet. So, um, priority is going to be pretty big this game um, if he ends up going a more offensive route. And then obviously, it's also great to revenge Diggersby. Um, we got Crobat next. Crobat can't touch a Celesteela. We'll see if that bites me in the ass. Um, but I figured that uh, it was good to have this mod for speed control. Uh, I lost to one of the mocks that I lost, uh, which was, I think I only lost like two or three mocks out of like 15 or 20, but um, one of the mocks that I lost was to a Sword Stance Keldeo, uh, which kind of beat this team. So uh, I had a Neelego originally on this set, which I think Neelego still looks amazing into him, but um, I dropped Neelego because I think people were over preparing for it in mocks and it didn't end up doing a ton. Uh, so I went Crobat, it's a little bit more reliable of a check, uh, to things like, uh, a, a Keldeo, where I can just click Roost, um, on a fighting move if it's locked into that, or I could just go into Keldeo pretty freely and threaten it out with the Brave Bird. And it's also very good against the Celebi and the Whimsicott combination in the sense that, um, I think against my team in particular, you're never clicking Psychic, um, you're mostly clicking a Grass move. Uh, so 
it can pretty commonly come in against those two mons if I'm pretty sure they're clicking U-turn or grass move and then I can threaten that out with a brave bird and click U-turn and just get a lot of momentum. Uh, this is also a really nice bring because it's bait for the Gigalith. I think Gigalith outside of Celesteela is probably one of the better answers to this thing. So if he goes Gigalith and I can click U-turn, I can trap it with Trap Inch, which is awesome. Um, and then Defog's there because if he just sides to like hazard stack me uh, or even like bring T-Spikes because I don't have any Lego, uh, that's important to have. Uh, next mod is Mesprit. This mod's like not necessarily here to check anything. It's just here to like kind of break a little bit and be a catch-all response to a few things. Um, as of right now, it's set uh, takes two U-turns from Adamant uh, Scarf Diggersby with the Citrus Berry. Uh, helping me recover some health. It also takes two Bolt Beaks from uh, non-boosting item Dracozolt, which is super cool, um, as well as it takes like plus two Celesteel hits from like multiple different attacks that it can run. Um, it has a lot of utility and Bolt, Be Bolt Beam plus Psychic hits basically his entire team. His best check is probably Gigalith and that's fine. Um, I can just trap it or, you know, break it down over time because it can't do much back to me um nasty plot three attacks just does a shit ton it breaks things like dragalge if i can get it in for free there it just it does great um the ev spread is like i said there to take those those hits that are important to take so stuff like that u-turn from diggersby body slams from diggersby as well uh, if it spams those uh things like draco meteor from dragalge things like plus two heavy slam from uh celesteela things like uh specs or scarf scalds and surfs just to make sure that you know i'm getting in that citrus berry range and getting that health back and just having a little bit more uh longevity on this thing and just i'm able to sponge one or two hits and, and deal more damage back than they're dealing to me with this set so that's mesprit and now the moment you've all been waiting for it's time for the little guy it's trap inch baby um trap inch is a bulky set this game uh, and I think it's probably the coolest set on the team, not just because it's Trap Inch, but because its EVs are intricate. Um, it is EV to take on Max Attack, Life Orb, Dragon Claw from Dracozolt, Max Special Attack, Draco Meteor from Dracozolt. It takes a Body Slam from Adamant Scarf Diggersby and KOs back with Superpower into Quick Attack. Um, Earthquake and a quick attack KOs Dracozolt if Earthquake misses out on the KO in the first place. Um, I can take hits from Dragalge as well. If Misty Terrain is up, then Draco Meteor definitely isn't carrying me if it's specs. If it's not specs, then I actually might also live a Draco Meteor. It depends on his investment. Um, it's all around pretty good. I mean, I also, I think this set also lives a plus one uh, Flamethrower from Volcarona, so that's pretty huge, uh, even though I don't have a rock move. Um, now you might be asking, where's the first impression for Celebi? Like, why are you superpower? Like, I'll go over the moves. So Earthquake obviously hits the Dracozolt. Quick Attack is good if I miss out on some KOs, like I said, against Diggersby with superpower or Earthquake with uh, Dracozolt. Or if I just need that extra, like, priority. Like, there's been moments in Mox where, like, Celesteel is on, like, 3% and there's, like, a Water Absorb Lantern in the back and I'd rather, you know, go into Trap Inch Quick Attack than go into Azu and click Aqua Jet, you know? So... That, that helps as well. Um, as well as quick, quick attack's been important for things like Whimsicott, which gets worn down quickly over time, uh, which is nice to just have that extra priority option in the back. Superpower, like I said, is there to hit the Diggersby, and I guess it is last, just as a latch as a last ditch effort, it can do some damage on Celesteela as opposed to first impression. Um, but really, it's just to take it from that Diggers being KO back. Now, Protect. Why the hell do you have Protect? One, obvious, stall out sand turns. That's pretty important. But two, is that I think one of his ways to get around Trap Inch with Gigalith is to click Explosion. And for those who don't know, if you Protect on Explosion, the user still explodes and you don't take any damage. So, the hope is, is that I can Protect on an Explosion Gigalith and he just kills himself and I don't lose any damage and it works out. So, that's the goal. Uh, that's that was completely Zazo's idea. I actually like got the set from him uh, that he thought would work here, which was mostly this set minus a few different EVs. Um, and I just took off to protect because I was like, "What the hell is this for?" <laughs> and then I realized, "Oh, wow, that works." So hopefully it ends up working out here. That's some genius. I would not have thought of. So shout outs to him. All right, that's the team, and hopefully it goes well. I'm really hoping Trapinch does something because. 
not only is that just important to be hype, I want to see Trap Inch do a lot of stuff, but also like if people start respecting my two pointer because it starts doing work in a game, that's amazing for me for the rest of the season. So big elephant in the room is no AG Slash. I just thought everything else was better. Uh, I'm not saying that AG Slash is bad this game at all. AG Slash goes wild always, all the time, but uh, you'll get to see AG Slash throughout the entire season. Don't worry. All right, let's get into the game. All right, we're here for our battle against Badass Frostlass. Uh, Coach the Indiana Tracers. Whew, a little nervous. Maybe I should have gotten water before this. Maybe I should go get water now. I'll be right back. Oh, God. Okay, I just drank a drink of water to, like, get it out of, like, to get make my dry, my throat less dry because I was just feeling that. Okay, so we're here. <sighs> Nervous, because we're bringing a trap inch, which is hilarious. Uh, okay, this is basically everything I expect, though. Uh, not surprised to not see Bulk, and I'm also not surprised to not see uh, the Keldeo. Um, and it's quite a relief, actually, to not see the Keldeo. <sighs> oh my god, why am I, like, heaving right now? We got Whimsicott. We have Gigalith, and we have Drug Algae. Let's go. Okay, so I'm glad that I was the correct in predicting the sand uh, to come, uh, because even though I have two grounds, they're both low tier grounds, and Dragzolt can pretty easily just click Earthquake on on what's it called on uh, Stunfisk, so that's why Trap Inch was a must bring here, but Trap Inch has utility in a few other places. If this is like a Scarf Diggers beat, I should be able to take one hit and KO back with uh, Superpower. I'm not sure if I'll have to do that because I might have to prioritize KOing Drixult this game. I think biggest issue this game will be the Diggers beat though, so that's good to know. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. I feel pretty fine, um, you know, and of course when I say that, maybe this is going to be a bad loss if I if I say I'm going to be fine, but I, I, I feel pretty good. I, I like this matchup, I like where I'm at in terms of the team building, the prep. I did just gen this, so if there were any genning errors, I didn't really check for those, so hopefully nothing happens. What do we see? We see Wee! Whimsicott. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to Ice Beam this raw, uh, because if, if Dragalgy comes in... Uh, then I get a big hit off on it. If it just attacks me, I should get a weakness policy in KO. So I'm just gonna click Ice Beam here. He could be... any... I don't know. Vinny... Whimsicott. Knock off. So he's gonna knock off my weakness policy. Makes me a little sad, but it's not the end of the world. Because this is going to do a lot. Eh, it didn't do as much as I thought it would. Honestly, that looks like Spideff, which is kind of weird to say, but kind of the truth. Um, I either see him going into like clicking a grass move or going into Dragalgy, so I'm gonna go into Crobat here. Because it covers both options. <sighs> He's gonna be staying in, so I imagine he goes for a grass move here. Energy ball, yep, makes sense. Uh, now I have two options. I can either U-turn here, or I can go for Brave Bird. I think I'm just gonna U-turn. That's fair. Uh, we're gonna see Lil Einstein. That is this thing. We're gonna get a read on this set if it's leftovers. Like, what is it? What are we looking at here? Uh, we see Helmet. Okay. So I bet this is Fizdef Helmet. Um, what do I wanna do against this thing? I could go into Knuckles here. Which I honestly wouldn't hate. I could just start breaking with this, like, straight out the gate. Um, which I think I'll do. I think I'm just gonna click T-Bolt. I'm, like, not afraid of 
much. Could see him staying in and just leech seeding. He could go hard diggersby if he's feeling like uber aggressive. Yeah, he does. So I could have nasty plotted there, but it's not the end of the world. I think he U-turns here. Uh, but this will probably give us information as to like whether it's Scarf or not. So I think I'm okay staying in and just clicking Ice Beam, perhaps. Uh, I do take a knockoff, I'm pretty sure. Let's just help and, and make sure. Mesprit. I should take any one hit, so I'm just gonna click Ice Beam. Yep, we're gonna see the U-turn. It's gonna do just over half, so we'll get our Citrus Berry. And this looks to be Scar. So that's good information in the sense that I could use Trap Inch for it, but I don't know if I will be using Trap Inch for it because of the whole. Because uh, of the whole uh, Drakezel thing. Scarf Diggersby is annoying. There's Troy Scarf Diggersby again. See Ice Beam come out. Yeah, it's probably gonna be Fizz Death. We get a crit there, which is nice. I'd be surprised if he stayed in, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll just Ice Beam again. I don't really care. Yeah, cool. Works for me. I should really be writing down, like, what HP everything's at. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm gonna keep this around. I think U-turn's likely, so I'll just go into U. So Whimsicott is at like 40%, maybe a little higher, maybe like 45. Steel is at like 60, I'll say, just to be conservative, and Diggersby is at like... what? I don't think I'm gonna get to see, will I? I'm not. Um, I think it's I think it's at like 35 maybe. So I have that information. Um God, Azumarill is looking great here. <laughs> uh Dragology comes out. Uh the mist is up, so I'm just gonna go Crobat, to be honest. Not the biggest deal in the world. Um and if if he flip turns into Steela, I'm just gonna go Zarude, I think. That would make sense. Flip turn. Sludge Bomb. Okay, great. Um, I'm just gonna click Roost here. It's fine. Uh, Draco? Is that what we're gonna see? Flip turn. Toxic spikes. Okay, I'm defogging the absolute hell out of these. Boy. Not allowed. No T spikes allowed. It does get rid of my mist though, which makes me sad. Flip turn. Okay, so we have Sludge Bomb. Flip turn, toxic spikes. Eh. Uh, Crocs comes out. What is this? That's this. Okay. Well, I'm clicking U turn on this thing. Um, just because if he gives me this for Trap Inch, that would be huge. I could see him exp. Wait, this is not Sandstream. Misgen? Questionable misgen? Um, if this isn't Sandstream, would I rather go into Cleopatra right now? I have no idea. Call me perplexed. Um, I 
think he just rocks. To be honest. I'm... Uh, I'm gonna go to a little guy. If he's sturdy, he's sturdy. He's rocks. Okay. So... I'll click protect on the off chance he's explosion. Because I don't have anything to lose at this point. Unless he's iron defense body press. In which case, that's a lot to lose. There we go. Awesome. Tech paid off. Look at that. Powerful. Trap inch stays living, boys. Look at this thing. <laughs> okay. Um, what comes in? I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll find out, I guess. Uh, this is amazing, though, because it means that Trap Inch can probably get one more KO off. Little Einstein is this thing. Ooh. Am I about to be heavy slammed? Um... So I have two options. I can go into Crobat and Clear. I don't think this is the time to do that. I think I'm gonna go Zaboomapu here. And potentially just spam Darkness Lariat. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Heavy Slam. So this shouldn't be doing too much. Yeah, it doesn't do, it doesn't do all too much. Um, I'm gonna bulk up here. I think bulk up is fine. Part of me also just wants to Darkest Lariat for, for chip damage. But I, I'm gonna bulk up once and just, just see what his immediate response is. Yeah, I, I think normally when you see a root in front of Celesteela, you don't fear too much. So, this is fine. Heavy Slam comes off. What are we looking at right now? Like, we're at 84. So as much as I want to Lariat here on what I like know is going to be a Dragalge, um, I think I'm just going to stay in and Synthesis. Because this is like so important. <laughs> um, yeah, he's going to switch out. So like I wanted to click Lariat there, but I know I can't. Oh, it's this thing. Interesting. Okay. Um, What do we know about this? It clicked knockoff turn one. We know that much. And we know that it's like pretty defensive. Zaru. Uh, plus one. The reason I'm considering this is because if I, if I chip this down just even a little, he might just U-turn though, to be honest. I'm gonna Larry it once to cover the U-turn play. This might be a big misplay. Knowing Moonblast. Okay. Because I, I could have gone Crobat there and defogged, but the mentality is like, hey, like, if I can, I will, like, catch him on the U-turn. But this isn't the end of the world. Because, like, I still get something out of that turn in that it's in quick attack range from Trap Inch. It's an Aqua Jet range from something else. Um, it's all good. So we'll go into Crobat here. He might U-turn, he might not. We could see it. It's not out of the realm of possibility. But he doesn't. That's great. So now I can click Defog. I love clicking Defog. I'm glad Defog's on this set. Originally it was Super Fang, so Defog. No more rocks, especially with Giglet gone. Especially no more rocks. Like guaranteed no more rocks. Like almost certainly no more rocks, which is amazing. Wow. Okay, Patty Mel. This is Dragazol, okay. Um, is this scarf? Like, I want to know what's going on, like, right here, right now. Now, I want to know so much what's going on right here, right now, that I think I'm actually willing to sack this Crobat to figure out if it's scarf or not. Um, because if it is scarf and kills me with Bolt Beak, I could just kill it with Trap Inch. So we're gonna do that. Okay, it's not scarf. Good to know. Um. Hmm few options. Could go Zaboomafu. 
because I know I outspeed it and I can synthesis on it. Is that something I want to do? I think it is. Let's play a little fun game here because he did say something to me. If this is Hustle Dracozole with Blunder Policy into my Zarude and it clicks Dragon Claw. <laughs> Doesn't even do over half. If it's like specs fire move. 126. Okay, it's light form. 126 to 43. Did Badass Frostlass just bring a hustle Drake's ult against me? 83. This is a Hustle Dracozole. Badass Frostlass just brought a Hustle- Oh wait, no, 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 I'm a liar. I'm a total liar. This is Adam at Life War. Alright, we're good. Um, I'm going for synthesis. Good. You're scared. You're scared of me. I'm a spooky, spooky monkey. Zabumafu is here. Hello. Nice to meet ya. Um, okay. I am no longer afraid of, of Drakezol with Sand gone. Um, like, not at all. So, Trap Inch's purpose now is to KO this stupid fucking bunny. So, my mentality at this point is least valuable mon is Finny. I go into Finny, if he U turns, great. If he kills me, also fine. Because what that does is it allows me to go into Trap Inch and claim my KO. So, what are we seeing? And like, am I even getting to a KO? I don't know. I'm max HP, so I, I, it's a dicker speed. I'm, I'm probably getting to a KO. Uh, you turn. Okay, great. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. Legucha. This thing. Okay. Um. Because Misty Train is up, Crobat is free. Crobat is free when Misty Train is up. This is how the world works. We know this. I no longer fear. Fear is not a thing. I just go for the roost. The roost is what I go for. I click the button, I click the heal. I heal with roost. It makes me heal and it makes me very happy that I heal. And you know, when we heal, we feel good. Let's go, Bat Rastard. Uh, toxic Spikes, again, okay. Uh, Defog, right? I mean, come on, people. Uh, or do I Brave Bird into Defog? I feel like I have no reason to do anything else except just like do the obvious play, because I feel like I'm that far ahead. Um, he might Draco here being like, yo, the Misty Train is gone. That's crazy. But I should still live in like any Draco, right? Flip turn. Nice. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, Lil Einstein's back. That's this thing. Neat. Um... We are going to go into... I mean, it's pretty straightforward, people. I mean, we're just going into the answer at this point. He could go into Dragalgy. He could go into whatever the hell he wants, frankly, as far as I am concerned. Um, yeah, he's just gonna have you slam. Cool. Um, I could Synthesis. I could Bulk Up. I think I'm gonna Synthesis first. Um, I would really like to get Azu in at some point, because it's at a point where, like, it's just gonna kill something with, bizarrely, the best move to lock into is knockoff right now. It's just gonna kill something, so, hey. Uh, this thing comes in, we, hello, we, um, see so U-turn, we can see, do I just want to kill what's in front of me? I kind of just want to kill what's in front of me. I'm just gonna click Lariat, to be honest.
you turn. Yeah, that does nothing. Zerud's broken. Zerud should be getting the thumbnail, but it Trap Inch is gonna get the thumbnail. I mean, Trap Inch could still do a lot. I mean, Trap Inch KOs this with 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 uh, quick attack. If I still had first impression, I'd probably KO the Diggers B with quick with first impression. Um, oh yeah, Razor said this would be banded Celestila, so he owes me like money now um, because we made a bet, uh, and he's watching, so I won't let him forget. Um, okay, plans, course of action, decisions. Uh, I'm just gonna sense this here because why not? Or do I bulk up? I'm gonna bulk up. I feel like that'd be wild. No, I'm gonna synthesis. Big thing that I can lose to here is timer. I don't want to lose to timer. Um, that would suck. He's rest. Okay, now I really don't want to lose to timer. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Darkest Lariat to, I mean, this is Max Vizdef, right? Who are we kidding? Darkest Lariat to Max Vizdef is doing a boatload of damage. So I'm gonna click bulk up. Um, and he's, he's going for a timer win here, like without question. Okay, there's you. Um, I'm just clicking Lariat here. I gotta play quicker, but I, I'm at a point now where since I know that I can play quicker, I feel like I can still like wrap this up in like 50 turns, hopefully is kind of the goal. Um, Lariat should not claim one, but like should do a lot. We're gonna see Moonblast here. Is that a crit? No, okay. <laughs> so Diggers will come in. Which isn't the biggest deal in the world. He has to click U-turn. He has literally no choice. He has to. Um, so that's good. Um, so Whimsicott's dead. No more Whimsicott to, to deal with. Shelby Bunny comes in. He has to click U-turn. He has no choice. It is mandatory that he clicks U-turn. So I'm going to get my Misty Train up. Um, and what that does is it allows me to either die if he clicks body slam and then I can KO with trap inch or um, or if he u-turns into drake ult, then I'm also fine um u-turn okay that's fine Trap Inch can claim one more here, which is awesome. Lechuga. That's this thing, right? No, it's this thing. Okay. Um, he could flip turn. He could do something else. Uh, I just go Bat Rastered. It's pretty straightforward, to be honest. I'm at a point now, though, since, like, Celesteela can, like, start doing some, like, timer stalling on me that I want to, like, start setting up with things. Uh, we're going to see Draco here. It's not going to do anything because of uh, the, the Misty Train. Is that a crit? No, it's just broken. Okay. Um, we're gonna roost here. He'll flip turn, which is fine. If I had rocks up, this would be a lot easier. But I think that's one of the bigger issues with my team is maybe I don't have the greatest rockers. Maybe. Um, I wonder if I lived that U-turn from uh, Diggers B. I seriously doubt it. Patty Melt comes out. It's you. Okay, I know I can U-turn on you. I'm not stupid. So I'm gonna U-turn. He could go Celesteela. He could get me there. That's fine. It wouldn't be the end of the world. Um. Yeah. That's fine, because what I can do now... Oh, wow, he goes into this thing. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Uh, can I go Trap Inch and just Quick Attack here? No, let's do it. I don't know if it kills, but even if it doesn't, I don't think this kills me with anything. Oh, it, it could kill me with Body Slam, actually. Um, I could click Protect. Oh, wait, but he's just going to U-turn here. He's not locked into anything, so this is like a throw. Um, but that's fine. Because he's going to U-turn. Yeah, he's going to U-turn into Steela. I mean, it only matters insofar at if uh, if Trap Inch can kill with Quick Attack. It might, so I'm just going to like take a shot. It looks like a roll. We'll see. If it doesn't, it doesn't. No, it did. Cool. Look at the tech. Did Trapage get two kills so far? Let's go. All right. Um, now Zarud looks great. So I'm, I'm actually glad I did that. It looks like a roll, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I'm gonna go into what? What do I want to go into? What, what am I feeling? Um, I don't want to get crit. I think I'm going to go into this. We still don't know his other move. It's Heavy Slam Rest, probably Sleep Talk. Probably Earthquake, if I had to guess, because AD Slash is a thing. Um, this might be a choke. We'll see. He just rests. That's fine. Um, I'm just going to T-Bolt here. I'm at a point where I'm just going to attack what's in front of me. Yep. Oh wow, that actually doesn't do as much as I had hoped. Earthquake, that is the last move. Nice. Um, I'm gonna Ice Beam now, on the off chance he goes Drake's ult. Look at me. Look at me. I'm so good. Does this kill? Tell me this kills. That's why. Oh, it didn't kill. No. Okay. Well, hey, whatever. Are uh, we going to trap inch here? Live any one hit and then kill with quick attack. Or I guess we're just going to die to uh, something else, but that's fine. Draco. Do I die to this? No! Trap Pinch. Oh, you're so fat. You're disgusting! Jesus Christ. Alright, you're dead to Life Orb. Trap Pinch has claimed one. We love to see it. Alright. This is going shockingly well. Like, amazing. Like, amazingly well. Um, this is going to try and heavy slam me. I know that much. I'm gonna go into, I'm just gonna go into Knuckles, to be honest. Like, even if he heavy slams me here or rests, I can just attack what's in front of me. Yeah, he goes Dragalge, which is fine. Um, because what I'm just gonna do at this point is I'm just gonna click Psychic, and even if he kills me with Dragalge here, um, I can clean up with Zarude, hopefully. Um, so we'll click Psychic here. I think that was a last ditch type double to catch me on Zarude when Mesprit's probably my safer play. Differential is not the end of the world as much as it would be co so cool to have like a, a thing in CDT that's like a 6-0. I don't, that's not what I'm aiming for. Um, plus differential actually, for those who don't know, um, some coaches don't even know this. And I live, that's crazy, Mesprit's broken. Um, for some coaches who don't know, a differential isn't the tiebreaker um, in CDT uh, for similar records. It's head to head and then differential. So, differential is even less important in that regard. Um, so, it doesn't bother me too much. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at T-Bolt, let Mousebird go down, and then kill with, uh, with something else. Uh, and we'll be good. We'll be set. I prepped really hard for this game because I respect Frostlass a lot as a player, and I know that he's wanted to play me for a while, so... Um, I didn't want to, I mean, in it's CGT, like, I don't know why I'm even saying this. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, woke up, 
He's going to heavy slam me, so it's not going to be 6-0 for him, uh, which is great. Uh, it's going to be a 5-0, which is awesome. Who do I want to give the last kill? I want to give it to Azu because Azu's on like a little bit of a potential kill leader streak, and Azu hasn't even come out this game. So we're going to go into Azu and give it to Azu. Um, let's go Azu. We could click player up. We could click activation. We could click knockoff. All of it's fine, but I think I want to click Aqua Jet. Um, actually, Aqua Jet might not even kill it KO with the defense boost, so I'm gonna go for Liquidation. That's fine. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, cool. Okay, I had a feeling it was just max HP, max defense, and I outspeed that. So we're good. Uh, we get the KO on Celesteela. Good game to Badass Frostlass. I know that uh, starting off 0-2 is pretty rough in CGT, but he is an amazing player, so please go check him out. He just started doing a layout that I made for him that looks pretty similar to mine, um, as well as... Uh, the fact that he's just a good player, um, and I know that despite the rough start, he played Sven and then me, which in my opinion is one of the hardest first two weeks that you can get, um, based on what I saw everyone else's first two weeks as. Um, definitely not the way you want to start off, but uh, we've seen some wild comebacks in CGT, so I would not be surprised if uh, uh, Frostlass still made playoffs or anything like that. So, good game uh, once again to him. It's very awesome to finally get to play him for the first time. Played Chuckle game for the first time last week, played Frostlass again for the first time this week, and next week we're going up against Jack, who's a little bit more familiar of an, op an opponent. Um, but we're starting off 2-0, which is exactly what we want to do, especially 2-0 plus 7. Like, that's great. We might be top of the league um, after this week, which doesn't say much after week 2, but it's still important. Um, maybe a little, I don't know. Uh, but the thing is, is... I started 2-0 last season, and then I went on a four-game losing streak, um, and I didn't end up making playoffs. So, uh, by no means do I feel like I'm, you know, secured, but I feel like I've been playing so well that, like, I feel much more mentally there than I was last season, which is amazing for me. So, once again, go check out Frostlass and look forward to next, uh, next freaking. Thing. I'm not going to do like a little end battle analysis for this game because I feel like I just played pretty fine. Um, so, I mean, maybe I'll watch it back and see something stupid and I'll make a little funny edit. But for now, I'm just going to, you know, do the battle as is and uh, go from there. But if you do want to see more of those for like other games, just let me know um, and I will definitely add them. But this week's going to be stressful because I'm moving out of my own apartment to Detroit um, because I need to live in Detroit for a few weeks before I go to London. So I won't have time. So. That's, that's where we're at. But, uh, yeah, 2 0 plus 7. Awesome. Uh, great two opponents to get wins against. And I will see you all next week where we go up against Jack. It's going to be a great game. All right. Bye, everyone.